What's up guys? Four Winter Doctor back again. Funny t-shirt for the day. Get it? We're the math nerds out there. Alright guys, today we're working on a another 350 rancher. Got a special on ranchers today. 420, another 350. Uh people like running these things out of oil around here, so um got some uh cylinder work we got to do. Uh, these things are pretty popular as far as my videos go. The ranchers are. I've had a had a number of folks check out my um, my motor rebuild videos, and pretty much any video I put up with a rancher seems to go pretty well. So uh, I'm gonna show what a lot of people probably deal with uh, just doing the top end on one. Uh, I just uploaded a video a couple days ago or a week ago or so of uh, doing the valves on one, and uh, I'm gonna take a few of those. Um, clips uh, as far as getting the plastics and all that stuff off gas tank and all that and uh add them right to the front of this video and after that we'll get into tearing the motor down so um just so i can give you a step-by-step -step, uh breakdown we'll start up with those videos from the uh last uh rancher video i had and uh y'all check these out if you know how to get the plastics off skip ahead a couple minutes and um i'll show you what to do once you get down to the motor all right hang on so I'm going to start off by, by far, this is by far the hardest thing to do is get all this plastics out of the way so that you can even get to the head of the motor. Uh, start off with, we'll pull this black cover off here, two or four push pins, you got two here at the back, two at the front, and uh, you have to take your gas cap off, and you pull this cover right off, and that will expose your gas tank. And most of the time you can get these valves adjusted with these side pieces in. Uh, there's still not very many push pins on those that hold them in. I may go ahead and pull those off too. They have a push pin here. This one's missing. Uh, that push pin there holds them at the top. And then you got two push pins here and one on the bottom here. So pretty much the same thing on this side. Two push pins here, one there, one here, and one on the bottom. I'll get all that pulled off and uh, show you what we got to take off the gas tank to get it off. All right, guys. Got all the push pins out of here. I'll give you a live action shot of pulling all this stuff apart. These, uh side pieces pretty much just slide back to come off of the tabs here by the gas tank and then twist them around to get the front end, front end of them out here like that uh, like i said before on this top black piece you take your uh, gas cap off slide this back comes right off and then the other black piece same thing twist it out there you go. All right, now you're left with the uh, bolts that hold the gas tank on. You got one 10 millimeter bolt here, two 10 millimeters up under the steering shaft here. About the easiest way to get those if you can get you a little um, extension or swivels get a little aggravating sometimes at places like this, but get you an extension with a little wobble end on it, and you can catch that um, catch that bolt on that. On that gas tank with the uh, handlebars turned, it's a funny looking bolt. It has a point on the end. It really helps you to get it lined up when you try to put it back together. So yeah, we're kind of thinking ahead on those. And then take your um, bolt out the back here. These are all 10 millimeter headed bolts. And the other thing you got to do to get this gas tank off is take your petcock uh, handle off. It's a Phillips headed screw. If this short Phillips will fit up in there. Yep. Sometimes these can be tough to get out. Sometimes they can have mud caked up in them, all sorts of stuff. So uh, just clean it out if you can't get your screw on yours. Um, other thing you need to pull off is this uh, snorkel. It doesn't have a clamp on the air box on this ATV. It's supposed to. So normally you would um, loosen that clamp up. And then it's got a push pin right here that holds it to the frame. So pull your push pin out like that. And then wiggle your snorkel out of there. Just like that. And you really have to bow those plastics back on these things to get this gas tank out of here. Um, next thing you need to do is pull your fuel line off. Usually it's easiest easiest to get off right at the um, 
right at the carburetor. If you can't hardly reach up in there and, and grab it up at the pet cock to right that thing off. Make sure your, your pet cock's turned off and that'll keep you from making a mess with the fuel line. Alright, and then slide your tank out just like that. This thing looks like it's full of gas. Alright, so now you're left with this uh, clear or well, white plastic piece here. Wipe this camera off a little bit. Looks like it's a little bit hazy. Try to give y'all the best experience. Hold on. There we go. Now you're cooking with gas. All right. This thing does have two push pins up here at the very front. Kind of hard to show you on here, but um, you'll see them when you get the gas tank off. So pull those two push pins out, and it will free up the uh, the clear, white, whatever you want to call it, call it plastic piece. One other thing you've got to pull off too to get this out is this um, the wiring harness goes up this left side, or I'm sorry, right side. Pull the little wire clips loose on it so that you're, they're actually attached to your um, white plastic piece here. So pull those loose so the white plastic piece will come out. Slide it back. And up got two uh, little form pieces of plastic at the very front of it that kind of clamp around the frame and that's what you got to get freed up so it will move out of there get all of your hoses out of the way got all kind of stuff hung up over here there it goes and it slides out just like that all right, and then that exposes the valve cover down in here. I'm going to grab the air hose and blow around this to get all the debris out of the way. And uh, I'll cut the camera back on um, right before I unbolt. The, actually, there's four bolts in it, 10 millimeter head of bolts. I'll get those out, cut the camera back on right before I pull the cover off. All right, guys, so I got all the bolts out. Uh, Blew this cover off to get the dirt off from around it, and it slides right off there. This thing has a um, a O-ring right here that makes make sure it doesn't get stuck on your valve cover and you lose it somewhere or whatever. And it's also got a gasket here. This is actually a reusable gasket. It's a metal gasket. Uh, you normally don't really even need any um, any kind of RTV or anything like that on it to to make it work. So. Um, the other thing you need to do once you get that off is remove this uh, timing hole cover right here on the side. This is on the right side. Uh, use a 6 millimeter Allen head. And I already broke this loose just to make it a little quicker. So uh, pull that off. There's also an O-ring in there. Make sure you pull that out too. And then now um, this one does have a pull start. I'm hoping that it works because that makes the job a lot easier oh, see there it's not it's not going to work so if that don't work you've got to take the pull start cover off if the pull start does work all you have to do is pull this thing out and watch actually what would like to do first is watch the valves and as the intake valve which is the one closest i'm sorry closest to the rear of the machine goes down and comes back up when it comes back up start looking through this hole and you'll see uh, two little tick marks. I'll try to show those to you with a flashlight once I get this pull start cover off. Uh, two tick marks. Then you'll see a T. I'm an F mark, which is where it fires, and the T mark is your timing, top dead center, and that's what you need to get to to adjust the valves. At that point, both valves should be loose. So let me get this um, pull start cover off. It's a little bit aggravating just because. Can't hardly get in there to it, and I may end up pulling the air box off of it just to uh, make it a little easier. And I guess I could probably show you that because you might run into the same thing. At least down here in, in the south, where everybody rides in the mud, these things get to where they w don't work very often. So um, the air box on these are very easy to pull off. Pretty much just a clamp here on the carburetor. This uh, crankcase vent hose here on the right side of the machine. You can pull it off with the a clamp and use your finger and then there's also a 10 millimeter bolt right here 
you have to remove there's a little bracket off the bottom of the air box you move that bolt you can pull that bracket out and then the air box will slide right off and that makes getting to the bolts on that um pull start a whole lot easier so let me pull that thing off and i'll show you show you how to pull the pull start off this thing. all right guys so i got everything loose now the bottom bracket actually is supposed to have a bolt that runs through the bottom of the air box and it doesn't so the whole bracket came off but that's what the bracket looks like um so now you can just take and slide this thing back sometimes that um the intake boot gets stuck on the carburetor like it is now take your screwdriver and pry back on it a little bit to get it to slide back just like that and then pretty much just lift this thing straight up grab these tabs on it here pull it straight up out of there now your air box is out and that really uh opens up some room in here to work there's uh I there's three eight millimeter headed bolts that hold that um pull start in and it's about you about have to use quarter inch drive stuff because uh you don't have a whole lot of room to even get the socket in there for the uh three eighths inch drive uh i'll pull the camera off and let you see so you got a bolt if you can make it out right there and then there's one right on the about even with the uh, swing arm over here and then you've got one over here on this side so I'm gonna grab the uh, quarter inch stuff maybe a maybe a deep well 10 might take a standard 10 too so uh, I'll get but I'll get all three of those pulled off and then show you what it looks like when I get it off I'm sorry I said deep well 10 this is actually eight you need a deep well 8 and a standard 8 to get those bolts off all right guys that's what you're looking like looking like when you get the pull start off uh, rotate that pull start up to the handles right up here by the starter and then pull it out from the top it's about all right guys got the thing at top dead center that just helps in the reassembly of everything uh next thing we need to do is get some of these um things that are holding the head on uh one thing is the uh header here there's the exhaust these are 12 millimeter headed um nuts uh, those things get hot and rusted and all that stuff, so it's good to spray some uh, penetrant on there. We've got some PV blaster on them, trying to loosen them up a little bit. Um, so I'll go ahead and pull those completely off. Sometimes the stud comes out, sometimes the nut comes off. So um, it, it, it really doesn't matter one way or the other. You still put them back in the same way. So you need to unbolt those and come back here on the back, and I'll see if I can show you. the um, About the easiest way to do this is pull those uh, that bolt there and... Or actually a nut that nut there to just remove the whole rear exhaust and then you have to remove these two pinch bolts here and uh, what you can do a lot of times is um, either hit the hit the header here to push it forward and it pulls it apart here or hit the exhaust back that way you can wiggle the thing around and get the head off without taking the exhaust off it's just a lot easier if you go ahead and take it off all right so I'm gonna do that next also Two other things while we're up here i'm gonna go ahead and um pull these two bolts off of the uh, intake here you can well i guess you can't take the um you could go ahead and pull the the carburetor off at this point and get in there with a ratchet i mean with a um yeah ratchet and a socket and get those off i like to use a uh a ratchet wrench come in here and grab them and just leave this uh, intake connected to the carburetor and just so I can take it to my storage I just leave it like that um, I also was not lucky as I mentioned before about uh, getting this to top dead center I had to pull the pull start off and there's another spot where the uh, gear wrench um, or ratchet wrench 8 millimeter really comes in handy so uh, if you don't have one of these before you start this job it's uh, probably not a not a bad investment to see if you could buy you one because it really helps it out so get those two bolts off your um so your intake will come right off and then the next thing you need to pull is this uh, bracket here the um, top engine mount it's a 14 millimeter bolt that runs through at the top and then there's two 12 millimeter bolts see if you can see them down in here no it's about too dark two 12 millimeters there's one there and then one right there two 12 millimeters on the uh, head that's bolted in uh, you have to remove those as well and I'm gonna go ahead and pull all that stuff off it's gonna take me a minute 
And then the next thing we'll be pulling off are the head bolts and get that top end off. So let me get all that off and I'll cut the camera back on in just a second. All right, guys, we got everything loose from that from this now. Uh, now we need to pull these acorn bolts off. Um, you can tell us it's still at top dead center. You got play in both of the valves here. So pull your acorn bolts. There's uh, four, two here on the top, two on the outside here. They have washers behind them too. You also have to remove this uh, 12 millimeter headed bolt as well as those two 10 millimeters that you see down there that actually hold the. They actually hold the um, the cylinder on. I think I don't believe the head's cracked. Yes. Oh, uh, they actually hold the cylinder on. So you got to pull those off to get the cylinder off. But we'll go ahead and pull them off. I usually um, just whip them off with the impact. Um, naturally, put them on with a torque wrench. But you can just take them off with the impact. Throw them in a bag and uh, get ready to put this thing back together a little later. So let me get all those off and I'll cut the camera back on right before I take it all apart. All right, guys, got all the bolts out of here. Now you just remove your, uh, I guess you call that rocker arm holder. Throw that in the bag with the head bolts. Drag the camera up here a little bit to get you centered up. Um, next thing you want to pull out are your push rods. Now, I don't know if there's such a thing, but um, a lot of y'all might call me crazy, but this just smells bad, like uh, the oil smells like it's burned or something. So there's another indication that... There may have been something going on with the lack of oil in this engine, and we'll probably find out here in just a second. So then just pull up on your head. It should slide right out of here, um, straight out the top. Keep it from catching on these uh, hoses over here on the top side. Comes out just like that. Look at the bottom of it. Actually, some moisture in there. Which is somewhat odd. Um, just any moisture in the uh, in the head of a of an air cooled engine. Got your head gasket here. Don't pay any any mind to the oil here because oil spills out everywhere. Not doesn't really mean that you've got a, a leaking a leaking head gasket or anything like that. <clears throat> it's usually just stuff that's spilled out from um, pulling it all apart. Let's see if I can find a rag, but I can't seem to find one. Sometimes these cylinders will pull right up, and sometimes they won't. So um, I'm going to try to pull it up. If it don't, I may have to take a rubber hammer and hit it around the side to break it loose because there is a gasket on that bottom. Oh, this one's going to pull right out. There again, watch your uh, wires on the top side over there, and then just slide it straight out. There you go. And what we have here, this is what a cylinder looks like when it's been run out of oil. That's not stains in the cylinder. That is gouged out spots. So, looks like it was just on this one side too. And see what the piston looks like. See the side of the piston there. Looks pretty dang bad. And actually you can tell where it started melting the piston here. That's gouged out spots. That's why we didn't have any compression. So um yeah. Cylinders toast on this one. And surprisingly, the crank feels good. The only problem we have with these bikes now that this thing's been run hot, obviously hot, and didn't have any oil in it, is uh, getting this wrist pin out. Uh, sometimes you really have to rig some stuff up to get it out. And I think I have something like a piece of threaded rod and some nuts and washers and um, sockets that I can put on there and end up pulling it out of there I'm not saying this one's gonna be stuck but the way this uh, piston it actually kind of catches right there catches right there it feels like there's gonna be some issue getting that pin out so let me uh, see if I can rig up some way to get the pin out of this thing I'll show you how I do that because you may run into the same thing and um, I'll cut the camera back on when I get to it 
All right, guys, we're back on this uh, 350 Rancher. I'm going to see about getting this wrist pin out of here. I've already uh, popped uh, one of the clips off. Couldn't get the front one out, but I got the rear one out, so that's what we're going to work out. Um, I'm going to try to use a, uh, well, a bolt. I don't know if you're going to have exactly the same stuff i got here, but you can kind of improvise and see where I'm going with it. Uh, what I did was took a piece of tubing. This is like a, I think, three-quarter, maybe one-inch tubing. See how I notched it out there? Um, the idea there is to, uh, let's see if I see a piston here. This piston's not quite the right size, but this is a 500. You can get the idea. To have this sit in here like this and press against the edge of the piston here as well as the part where the um, wrist pin goes through. And it will work on that when I measured it just to make sure I got the depth right. Uh, like I said, that's too big of a piston there. But uh, what, what the idea is, is to put this in here like this and then take a bolt. I don't know where in the world this came from, but I found it over there laying in the floor. Looks like a bolt that had the head cut off and they bent it over. Um, I think I used it to lift the motor one time, uh, like a Chevrolet motor. Uh, but this will fit into here. And you need to make sure this is long enough to hold your wrist pin. This wrist pin here is actually for another bike. But um, it's the one we've got there is smaller. And it will fit right inside of here. So we stick this through the piston like this. Have that tubing meet up to the back side there. Flush up on it. You got a little bit stuck out the back side here. What I'm going to do is take a socket. I used a... Uh, this is just a sacrificial 13 millimeter socket and I actually drilled the hole out so that that bolt will go through and a nut. Put all that stuff on here and then tighten this nut down to try and push that pin out. Um, I will say I've had this work a few times and I have had it not work maybe a couple times. Uh, sometimes those things are just seized up in there and real tough to get out. But uh, I'm going to see if I can get it all rigged up here and uh, I'll cut the camera back on as I start tightening down on it and we'll see what it does. I'm kind of scared that this thing may uh, bend bend back out straight. If that happens, I'll just have to find a bolt that'll fit through there. I would usually use a piece of threaded rod, but um, I don't have one that size here tonight and it's 10.30 at night, so I can't go get one. So anyway, let me get this rigged up and uh, I'll cut the camera back on in a sec. Well folks, this thing looks like it's going to work. I ended up sticking a washer out here on this end and my bent a uh, bolt that I had did not work, so I ended up having to just get a uh, a long bolt to stick through here. See, I got a wrench on this side holding it, and I'm tightening it with this uh, uh, 14 millimeter, and it's pulling it through there. It's slow, which uh, is as to be expected. Um, most of the time, I don't have an issue with the pin in the uh, in the rod. It's most of the time it's seized up to the the actual piston, so um, you can you can rotate the piston back and forth on there, but the on the rod, but the the pin will not just slide out of the piston like it's supposed to. But um, I'm gonna keep keep this up. I may run out of bolt here in a little bit, and I may have to go to my my bent bolt because it is a little shorter. But uh, I'm gonna keep this up. I did end up getting that snap ring out of this side. I pressed it a little bit. And uh, took the took the socket back out of there that I drilled the hole through, and um, got the snap ring to come out. That's the ideal situation because you don't want to have to push that snap ring all the way through, and it probably won't even go through the uh, rod bearing or the rod end if you did have to get that far with it. So I'm gonna keep this up, and uh, I'll cut the camera back on to show you what it looks like when I get it out. All right, guys. So <clears throat> finally got this thing pressed out. I ended up having having to make some small little sleeves. To uh, stick in the end of the or on the end of this bolt uh, in order to get it pressed all the way out because it just wasn't. I didn't have enough threads. Uh, I really needed a, a piece of all thread or um, threaded rod, whatever you want to call it, to get this out. But I didn't have that, so we improvised. And um, you can see I made two sleeves there. They're stuck together on there just to make it um, to where it would push it all the way out. And then there is the rest of our apparatus, the part that fit up in the piston, and the godforsaken wrist pin. You can see that thing is uh, worn pretty bad. Uh, 
weird thing about it is the the rod end here still feels fairly smooth so um i'm gonna get a top end kit order for this thing and just pray that this rod will still or this uh piston pin will still slide into this rod smooth once the new one comes in and um we're gonna put this thing back together so let me get the um get the thing here actually i hadn't even ordered it yet but i'll order it because i gotta order this one and another one identical to this that i'm doing too so get both of those ordered and uh we'll pick the camera up when i get them in all right guys back on the rancher now i ended up getting the um cylinder kit in for this thing it's a little kit i picked up off of ebay i've used quite a few of these before um very very inexpensive and uh, i've had pretty good luck with them aftermarket naturally and um uh, when you get one like this has been run out of oil you really cylinder scarred up pretty bad uh so that's pretty uh pretty good idea to, to buy one of these and uh, just replace the whole top end on it crankshaft still good on it it doesn't have any play in it uh did have a little bit of a burr in it where you know, we had pressed that um the wrist pin out so i had to run the dremel through the through the rod there just a little bit to knock that burr down i couldn't get the um the wrist pin to slide right through it so we're gonna uh go ahead and try to throw this thing together real quick it's pretty early this morning and uh try to get over here before my little boy got woke up uh he's gonna be calling in a little bit wanting to go eat breakfast so uh i'm gonna have to stop off but uh hopefully we can get this thing thrown back together before he calls all right so um we got the gasket material cleaned up pretty good here uh, should be able to just slide this thing right back on should is the key word there this uh piston that comes with this kit it's just a cast piston just uh very very similar to the one that uh honda uses it does have a little bit different clip on it compared to the honda ones actually a little bit better design it's got a little tang in the middle there that you can grab onto with a pair of pliers and uh twist them in a little easier the piston has the end stamped on it just like most of them do uh, that should go toward your int intake side which would be the rear of the engine so we're getting ready to slide this thing in um i normally just put oil on these things but i found a jug of uh, assembly lube that i've lost years ago so i'm gonna uh put a little bit of assembly lube on it it's um just some real thick lubricant if you don't have that oil will work good too but I've had some people call me out for not using assembly lube, so we're going to do it right, do it the PC way on this this install. We'll say just slide the um, slide the pin through there. This thing is pretty tight in this piston. May have to tap it to get it to go all the way through, but um, it'll slide right through the rod. But seems a little tight in the piston, so let me tap that with the uh, end of the screwdriver. It seems like once it gets once it gets kind of lined up, it'll slides through much easier but all right i gotta make sure i'm running it through the rod here see my luck i knock it about halfway through there and then it not even be wound up on the rod end there we go going in there now i probably could grab a hammer since uh you know hammers are made for hitting on stuff not really screwdriver handles, so I'm gonna grab a hand, hammer real quick. All right, tap this thing on in there. Make sure it goes all the way in. You won't be able to get your uh, clip in there if you don't. All right. So now we're ready to go with the clip. There again, I've said this a hundred times. Make sure you put your rag in there. Because uh, if this clip comes off, these aren't as easy to fly off because uh, they have the thing I can hold on to with the pliers. But if your clip happens to come off, more than likely it's going to fall down in the motor. And you don't want that to happen. So uh, put your rag in there just to uh, try to catch it. And also, guys, you wouldn't believe how many people that I have had message me about getting that clip out of the bottom of the motor. Because I think they guess I thought I was kidding about sticking a rag in there. But I wasn't. 
Uh, if I'm a flashlight, make sure that snap ring is seat, seated all the way in there. I'll tell you guys, flashlights around this shop are about the hardest thing for me to keep up. I don't have as much problem as most people do with 10 millimeter sockets. It's more flashlights than these. But it looks like it's in there. What I like to do on those uh, clips, when you do get them in there, is rotate them around a little bit. Even if you use the use the regular clip, um, Honda gives you, rotate it. Just make sure it gets seated in that groove good. See, and then, then this flashlight that I did find, it don't have work. All right, next order of business. Get this rag out of here. Because piston won't move up and down if you leave it in there. Had that happen a time or two. All right, so now we're ready to put the rings in. And this is how I do my rings. The biggest thing on these is not to let the gaps line up. You've got um, uh, oil, oil ring here, oil spacer ring, and then the rings that go over top of it are two small ones. Uh, that's what we're going to grab onto first. The way I orient these things, if you say the top of the piston here is 12 o'clock point facing you, the I usually put the oil scraper at the 6 o'clock position, that at the bottom, and then it doesn't matter top or bottom on these uh, skinnier rings, the ones over top of the oil scraper, uh, I usually put those about, we're going to do this one at about probably 10 o'clock that one went in on the bottom and then this other one about maybe one one thirty two o'clock something like that so got them angled so none of those gaps have line are lined up you slide these things over you you don't really need a spring compressor or anything to get these on they're uh, pretty easy just to push on with your hands Okay, and then these two rings that come, the other two rings that come with the kit, these vary from time to time, but uh, they, just like the Honda ones, have something stamped on top of them. They say STD for standard. That, the writing should go up. And on these rings, the difference between the two, the top ring has a, like a silver ring around the outside of it, and this middle ring is just all black. So uh, put the middle ring in next. And we're also going to orient it at the six six o'clock position. I know uh, you say the ring gaps are lined up, but there's actually a ring between them, so they're not. So put that in at six o'clock. Better get it in the groove. There it is. And then the next one, writing up, will also go at the twelve o'clock position. And that's it on your rings. Also, one other thing on this uh, cylinder, before I before I got to this point, put, getting ready to put the thing in, I I usually go through and clean these out. Um, my engine guy put me on that. I don't really know if it makes a difference or not, but it almost seems like it has to. The um, these cylinders, when they bore them, they hone them, and then that they don't really clean them. So that all that grit and stuff from that hone will get into the grooves that the hone made in the cylinder and then when you put the motor back together uh, that grit will still be in those grooves and as the piston moves up and down on it it will prematurely wear your piston out so I take and clean these things real good uh, I actually use warm soaking water to begin with then I'll go with um, uh, transmission fluid uh, there again, at request of my engine guy that does my borings for me, he says that transmission fluid will clean, and it, it makes uh, makes sense as well. It cleans pretty well. It's got detergents in it or whatever, and so I just keep cleaning it until the transmission fluid comes out back red. Uh, first few times you do it, it'll get real black, um, and that's how I clean those. So make sure you clean them before you put them on. Uh, next thing we're going to put in is these two dowels. There are two dowels at the rear of this cylinder. We'll go around and wipe this down just to make sure we got any kind of contaminants off of it. And then we're going to put our gasket in. 
this gasket is does not need any kind of a seal it or anything just do not put any on it I've a uh, long time ago I used to do these and people rode in the water all the time and I used to seal them up with a with RTV on every gasket if you put RTV on this gasket here the pressure from bolting this head down will actually squish the gasket out and cause a leak had that happen so uh, after that I did not uh, I do not put RTV on it anymore all right so now ready to slide the cylinder on the biggest thing on these is getting these freaking um, cables out of the way for the for the uh, what you call that thing carburetor all right so now we got it sliding down this piston uh, this sleeve here does our, our cylinder does have a little bit of a, um, a chamfer on it which will help you slide these rings in and I normally just kind of rock it down on there take a, a small screwdriver and push in on the push in on the rings as it starts to go down but you also need to hold up on your cylinder from the bottom to keep it from pushing down into the uh, into the crankcase. Thought I had everything I needed over here, but obviously I didn't. Let me find a screwdriver. And then like I say, just work your way down, pushing in on the piston rings as it as you um work the cylinder down. Sometimes these slide right in there very, very easy. Sometimes they don't. I might have to pull this up a little bit. It actually dropped down some when I stuck a screwdriver up under it. I'll halfway hold it up. Alright. The top one started in there. Usually once you get one or two of them in there, they'll uh they'll really slide on in pretty easy once it gets kind of lined up. Biggest thing you don't want to do is force this thing on. You can see I'm tapping it out down, but just barely with my fingers. And we're almost all the way down on there, with the exception of the uh, oil ring. Wiggle it down on. I might have to come over there on y'all's side to see if I can see what the what the ring's doing over there. Doesn't feel like it's kicked out. side and check it. I'll shove my screwdriver back under here to keep this thing from falling back in the crankcase because once it falls down in there it's real tough to see what the rings are doing. So let's see here. Right, nothing looks like it's popped out so it should it should slide right down in there. It's not uh I don't think it's quite squared up in the hole. I believe it got kind of kicked, kicked a little sideways, so see if I can straighten that up with my hands. I didn't I didn't say this before but I did um I did shoot a little oil in this cylinder 
to help lube it up a little bit before I pressed it down on here. So uh, now that crank crankshaft unslid down, which is not a big deal at this point, just because I've uh, got it pushed in. Let me rotate the the uh, pull start around here if I can with my hands. Get our piston back to the top right there. Now we got to get it over these dowels. They're not, uh, they're not lining up. Make sure your dowel dowels line up in the bottom and uh, tap it all the way in. There it goes. Make sure your bottom's out along the bottom here. Um, all right, so next thing we're going to throw in is going to be the head gasket. Uh, I didn't do this and I should, so I'm going to cut the camera back off. But uh, it comes with a gasket. I'm going to um, put some copper seal on it, let it dry for a minute, and then I'll cut the camera back on. And hopefully I'll have everything else over here that I need to bolt this thing down. So let me uh, let me cut it off, get, get back with you in just a second. Hey, yeah. All right, guys. We uh, got everything. I think I got everything together here that I need. Got the uh, head gasket copper sealed. I don't guess you have to do this, but I just like the way it does. It uh, makes it real tacky, and I believe it really helps to seal up. So, um, I'm sorry, we got Riker over here in the background. He's puffing because his football's on top of the shop, and he wants me to go put him on the roof to go get it. So, no, we'll do that no. in a minute. No, and, it, no. and he's cold. Okay, so put your valve or your head gasket on there. Uh, next thing we need to slide on, actually there's two dowels too, a dowel here and a dowel there. And now we're going to slide the head on. I did clean this thing up a little bit. Uh, cleaned up the combustion chamber and um, sprayed it all out with uh, with brake cleaner. So just slide this thing down on here. Line your, uh, line your bolts up studs up I'm sorry push it down on the the dowels pulls down on there like that and then now we're going to stick the the washers and nuts that go on here to hold this thing down you've got uh, two washers here on the outside start off with and these have Two acorn nuts. I just finger tighten them on there. They still got a little ways to go. I don't think the head's pushed all the way down into the dowel. And then the other thing is uh, we need to slide the push rods in. Slide right in here. And the other one goes in right there. And then put this rocker arm holder on. There's also a dowel here and here for that rocker arm holder. Make sure you got both of those in there. It slides down. Two more washers on here. Like that. And two more acorn bolts. Uh, right there. And this 12 millimeter headed bolt goes in here. And then now we're going to torque this thing down. The torque spec for it on these acorn bolts is, let me check my manual here, uh, 29 uh, pound feet or 39, 39 newton meters. Newton. And that um, 12 millimeter headed bolt is 22 foot pounds or 30 newton meters. And what I like to do is try to put these down in uh, steps. So, um, I would I've got the torque wrench set here for about 10 foot pounds so uh, tighten them down until till it clicks on the 10 foot pounds and tighten it up to 20 and then go to go to the 29 that it calls for um, so we'll get those tightened down and uh, I'll cut the camera back on right before I adjust the valves on it. The easiest way to get it out all right now what we need to do is uh, rotate this thing around to get it at top dead center uh, that's a 17 millimeter nut that's on there. So I got a 17 millimeter socket, a uh, deep well, and I'm, it really doesn't have to be a deep well, but uh, a ratchet. You want to turn this thing 
um, that'll be clockwise in order to get this thing to top dead center and like I said before you want to watch this valve here for it to go up and that's the intake valve for it to go up and come back down I think I was probably on the compression stroke right there so keep rotating this around till you see that valve move all right there's the exhaust moving now the intake all right and then we're going to need to come back down here to our timing hole and i'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this or not but i'll try to show it to you the um the actual marks in there i'm gonna get them turned around to where i can at least see one or two of the marks and maybe get the camera down there and um zoom in on it to see if i can show it to you so rotate this around what you're looking for the uh first two marks to come up are the two tick marks I to get something to down. i can't even see in the hole this thing's about too low for me so uh I can't get my hand in there to the ratchet. So keep going around. There's your two tick marks. Uh, I'm going to see if I can zoom this thing in. To where maybe you could see this. Y'all bear with me. All those folks out there that get seasick. Turn your head for a second. Alright. Let me see. I have to drop the camera down. Let me drop it down just a little bit. I'm bound to determine to get this uh get this shot here because it's it's tough to do from time to time. Actually it's tough to do every time for me it seems like. Alright, hold it right there. Alright, let me see if I can show it to you now. there folks is what we call the money shot that's your two tick marks it's kind of like a bigfoot you usually don't get to cap cap capture them on camera same thing with these tick marks i really struggle with this okay so there's the two tick marks next mark you come to will be the t or i'm sorry f mark see it right Maybe you can see it. That shined a light in the hole. There you go. You got an F. And it has a little mark right above it. What you're trying to do is pretty much just center this up in the hole. There's a little cast part at the back of that hole that's supposed to act as a pointer. And then the next mark you come to will be the T. There it is right there. Actually, the tick mark is below the T on this model. You can see the T and the little line under it. And that's what you line up for top dead center. Once you get that lined up, you can check your, let me zoom back out of this baby. You can check your valves to see if both of them have play. See that one does? That one does too. They got way too much play. So uh, let me get the camera set up on the other side and I'll show you how to adjust them. So the, there we go. That works better. So the valve clearance on this thing is um, six thousandths. You can see that, or I think it's 0.15 um, inches, and these have a ton of play in them. You can see it, there's no resistance at all, at least on that um, exhaust valve. So you break the, the lock nut loose on there, it's 10 millimeter, and then you turn this center adjuster down until you get resistance on your filler gauge. I usually use a... Uh, just a little short flat screwdriver. See, this thing's going to turn. Looks like almost a whole turn. It doesn't take much of a turn to really make a difference on these, so you don't really have to crank it down too hard. And then when you get real close, um, just the, the slightest of a turn will make a pretty substantial difference in your valve clearance. And it's still a little bit loose. I'm going to go a little bit tighter than that. And what these what you're trying to do here is trying to get a little bit of a gap in this valve 
so that as these things warm up they will um, have some additional clearance and your valves not opening prematurely so um, you leave a little bit of a gap and sometimes even after you do this when it's cold is when you're supposed to do it and all um, sometimes when you crank them up they'll still rattle a little bit and I have had to take them back apart and adjust them one last time you know after you get it turned over and everything everything seats in there right um, your valve clearance can still be off so I, uh, I like to do them ahead of time sometimes I don't have to redo them but there again sometimes I do so uh, that's all you do just tighten them down the clearance is the same on both the intake and the exhaust on this bike get a little bit of a um, little bit of drag on it Yeah, it's still a little too loose. Okay, just a hair bit tighter. And it's also good to uh, keep your keep your screwdriver in your uh, adjuster there while you tighten the nut up because sometimes the nut will spin that center adjuster and make it even tighter. And that's not what you want to do. So um, keep your screwdriver in there to keep a little pressure on it. Yeah, both of them are pretty tight there. So that's that's it on our valve adjusting. Um, now we're gonna stick the the valve cover back on. It has a reusable gasket, so you don't have to put any RTV unless you want to on them. Uh, reusable metal gasket sticks in here like this. And then your valve cover. The biggest thing on it is to make sure this O-ring is in your valve cover or in your either on your valve cover or on your rocker arm holder there. That slides on there. Four 10 millimeter bolts. Alright, so then I'm gonna get that bolted up. We'll have to put our carburetor back on here on the back side, our engine motor mount here. Uh can't see it, but the motor mount goes here, and then our exhaust. Change the oil in this thing because I still hadn't changed it, drained it out, and put another filter in it. And uh, we're gonna see if we can get it to crank up. So let me get all that stuff done and I'll cut the camera back on right before I um, try to crank it. All right, guys, here we go. We're gonna see if this thing will crank. Hopefully, it will. I didn't really do anything with the carburetor, so there's a good chance the carburetor might be uh, gummed up in this thing. But anyway, we're gonna give it a shot. Uh, got it filled up with oil, got a little bit of gas in it, so hopefully, it'll crank the. Um, Battery's on charge, so just got enough juice to turn it over. Got the spark plug hooked up. Uh, fuel's on, full of oil. So here we go. up pretty good uh, choke is stuck on this thing and these ranchers are horrible about needing to be choked so that's why I had to stick my hand over the uh, intake to get it to fire it running a little low on idle but I still got to put the air box on and that should help that out um, I really wouldn't do any tuning on these things until you get the air box and that factory snorkel back on there because that actually restricts the air down a little bit to uh, make them run right uh, I think this thing and I changed the oil in it a while ago um, I'm pretty sure that the filter was in there backwards. The I uh, took the cover off and uh, all the stuff popped out of there all together. But it looked like the filter, the way it had some wear marks on it, looked like it may have been in there backwards. So um, there's a good chance that's what made this thing uh, seize up. No oil to the top end and just melted the piston in it. Uh, this is a, fan, a Fram filter, and they're made to where they'll actually go in there either way. The Honda filters have a little lip on them where they won't go in there backwards. So um, just make sure your filter's in there right if you have one of these ranchers because uh, I done run into a few of them like this that either will run out of oil or uh, just didn't have a filter incorrectly and it, and it messed the motor up. So, guys, check out my other videos. I'm going to uh, probably add this to a playlist because i got a bunch of these rancher things on here. 
and um, hit the like button, subscribe. Y'all have a good day.